welcome and thanks so much for joining us for our News 8 throwback special stories that stuck with us. Come along as we dive into the archives to give you a rare look into our video vault through the eyes of some of our veteran employees. Here in San Diego, CBS 8 has the largest most comprehensive catalog of archival news footage, and it's all right here inside our KFMB studios. CBS 8 is San Diego's longest running television news station. That's right, we hit the air all the way back in May of 1949 as the first television station in the area. We were even on the front page of the San Diego Union Tribune. Let's start things off with a San Diego mainstay we all know and love, the Zevely Zone. For years, Jeff has been bringing us the best of San Diego the food, the places, and above all, the people that make our city America's finest. Archives editor Barb Nielsen handpicked this selection of stories. Barb is in Archives HQ, where she spends most of her time pouring over footage that is decades old and digitizing it for all of us to enjoy. What do you have for us right now, Barb? So these are the card files from 1952 to 1991. TV8 employees had to type out all the information for all the stories that ran in the newscast. So they made it very easy for us to find it in the future, and here we are. So say I want to find something on Balboa Park from 1979. There it is. Pull it out. And I see a lot of good throwback stories. And in here we have film boxes. And each time I open up a canister, this one is from 1966. It's just, you never know what you're gonna find. Videotape came along in 1975 and it's all stored in here. And this is where the tape is digitized. I've seen so many incredible stories in my 33 years here, so it's hard to pick a favorite. Film was before my time, so it's been very exciting to get it restored. So I picked three stories from the 1960s that ended up in the Zevely Zone. I'm always out at garage sales and estate sales and swap meets looking for stuff. But anytime you spool up an old piece of film, it's really exciting to me. I think we need to start with your name. P. Hicks. P is short for peanut, uh, which is uh, my nickname since birth. I'm always looking for that thing that is obscure that never got properly documented. We may have something for you. Okay. We've heard that Gregory Peck All may right. be buried somewhere oh. in there. Oh, somewhere in here, okay. <laughs> Boy. The old footage hasn't been played since 1963. We got to this one just in time. <laughs> but leave it to P to finesse the film. I will do my best with it. This I one's gonna be a challenge. Life. And bring another piece of San Diego history. Is this the moment? Back to life. Is this happening? This is Oh, Gregory Peck. Is this the greatest discovery you've ever made? Almost. Two years ago, P revived this lost footage of the Beach Boys shooting their Pet Sounds album cover at the San Diego Zoo. And now in an instant, P takes us back to the Spreckles Theater for the premiere of To Kill a Mockingbird. Mr. Peck, is Hollywood just about dead as the motion picture capital of the world, or is it beginning to make a comeback? <laughs> well, I hope it's not quite dead. CBS aides Harold Keen asked Peck if he thought a white lawyer representing a black client would create racial tension for moviegoers. Yeah, that sounds rather foolish to me. Uh, I doubt that they've read the book and seen the picture. Let them see it or read it and say that afterwards. Gregory Peck won the Academy Award for his role. Now we can treasure the memory forever. Marilyn Mitchell, this is your life. Oh my goodness. In 1963, San Diego welcomed home Mrs. America. Have you ever seen this footage before? No. Mm -mm. Marilyn, this is a proud day for San Diego. We're very proud of you and proud of your achievement. I like your apple pie. I like all the steaks she makes. Oh, that was nice. I've never seen that. Which is exactly why we called this queen of class. This is fan mail? Oh, yeah. Lots of it. And begged her to share the surprise of her life. Memories. Way back when. 
Hi, Barb. <laughs> Imagine your surprise at the age of 73 if a television station discovered film footage of you. I thought that was amazing. <laughs> this is Barbara Gill, who went by Barbara Smith back then, competing in the Miss San Diego pageant more than five decades ago. Totally amazing that there would be some footage from the San Diego pageant in 1967. Barbara was a 19-year-old Grossmont High graduate trying to become the next Miss San Diego. Barbara finished fourth in the contest and went on to become an accomplished ice skater before falling in love with her husband, Larry. Brought her back to life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Larry reached out to News 8 from their home in Canada, wondering if we still had this old footage. Good morning, Barbara. It's so good to see you in person. Barb Nielsen, News 8's archive editor, got to work. I couldn't believe that you wrote back. <laughs> Barbara says this was the first time she had ever worn a formal dress, and this footage is priceless to her. Such a great look back into our video vault. Now, one of the hardest working members of our news team is our eye in the sky, Chopper 8. But we didn't always have a helicopter. It wasn't until the 90s when we were able to buy our first chopper and give our viewers a bird's eye view of the city we call home. It didn't take long for us to catch an intense police pursuit. Director John Boren, who has worked here for 35 years, was in our control room when that shot came in. I get kind of nervous when I think about this one. This was probably one of the more stressful events that I've experienced working here. The helicopter had just started. We'd only had it like three weeks. I'm tracking it manually using this computer system. This is where it gets kind of interesting is not only do we bring you traffic and fires, but also live events. The pressure of basically keeping the signal and we're going to go break in live and now we're going to follow a car chase and we're gonna stay on this for maybe 15, 20 minutes, however long. These chases, you never know how they're gonna end, but the reaction that Jason relayed, being professional, you'll see and you'll hear and you'll feel how he has experienced this firsthand. It's real and it's live. Oh boy, here we go. Boom, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I'm sorry. When oh, the car no. driven by the suspect crashed into that intersection, oh, no. lives changed. Amber Russell and the Nissan walked away. So did the driver of the red pickup. But 61-year-old Joe McCarley, who drove the Jeep that spun out of control into the traffic light, didn't. Paramedics immediately airlifted him to the hospital. His wife, Patsy, described his injuries. He spoke to us. He recognized all of us. He was uh, very bloody, he has lots of cuts and abrasions, and he has a broken jaw, a very deep gash over his right eye. Three broken ribs and a broken nose, so he didn't look, you know, too good. But he's alive. In fact, the Oceanside husband and father of one who'd been on his way to a weekly bowling session has been upgraded to between fair and good condition. Oh, he was doing good this morning. He, uh, he's, you know, they got him in on a lot of medication and stuff, but he's... Hanging in there. They're going to do the surgery in the morning. The McCarley household uh -huh. has been inundated with phone calls and visits from friends and family, as well as lots of media visitors. Joe McCarley works in grounds maintenance at Torrey Pines High School, while his wife Patsy is an administrative secretary with La Costa Canyon High School. Son Rich saw the TV coverage. He questions the CHP officer who tried to flag the suspect down. He should have his gun out or ran the car into the K-rail divider there or something. But you can't, after you chase a guy 100 miles, he obviously isn't going to stop. So you need to do something a little more drastic than say, hey, buddy, roll down your window. Patsy McCarley says she and her husband are just average working folk who are very thankful for all the support they've received. And what does her husband say about all the attention? He hasn't really said very much. Um, they have him on, you know, a lot of pain medication. So he, he doesn't talk too much when we're down there. He's just... You know, I'm glad to be alive. <laughs> the first chase live on our airwaves. Our throwback special continues when we come back. We are looking back at the day veteran reporter Larry Himmel covered the destruction of his own home during the Witch Creek Fire 15 years ago. Then a radio contest that went off the rails. How we managed to deliver a live report from the historic Giant Dipper roller coaster in 1998. A technological miracle in those days. Well, uh... 
Welcome back. 15 years ago, the Witch Creek fire ripped through San Diego, leaving a path of destruction and ash in its wake. It was October of 2007, and the wildfire quickly grew to become the second largest fire on record that year. Here at News 8, our hearts were so heavy as we watched the flames destroy the home of our own Larry Himmel. Dedicated to his craft, colleagues, and the community, Larry, as you can see, picked up his mic and went to work describing his emotions and sharing his his thoughts as his home in Rancho Bernardo burned to the ground. Veteran CBS 8 photojournalist Bruce Patch remembers that harrowing day. The whole county was on fire that day and we were on top alert of where we're going to be, where we're going to go. I didn't know if I was coming back to my house. I can see our driveway. I'm probably about 200 yards and I mean every bush around there is on fire. They he said, knew the fire was moving through there and he wanted to see what was going on. Good job, you guys. Thank you All right, buddy. The anticipation and the smell and the sounds and the heartbeat and the camera and the Larry, as a close friend, it was, uh, it was very tough, very, very emotional and you know, once we uh, got to his driveway, he turned, I remember, and I thought, what are you doing? And he was welcoming us to his house. On any given day, I would say welcome to my home. But this is what is left of my home, just outside the forest ranch area. A fire crew that fought valiantly to save every house on this hill at least took a shot at it and were nice enough to let us up there. That was our garage, the living room over there. There was a porch. Back there, the bedrooms. Uh, no pets left behind, family out, cars out, safe, but you can see my hose right here valiantly trying to do something, but this is it. It's a southwestern style house. I'd been in it about 25 years. Out here when there was nothing, we did the cleared brush. We did what we could. This was a living hell coming over the hill. And this is what I come home to today. Just got to do your job. That's our job is to report what's going on. And, and we did it, and Larry did it, and uh, I'm proud of it. I really am. This is uh, the garage area. You can see the washer and dryer. They're the only thing that made it. This was his dream home. The next day, Heather Myers did a story with Joni, Miles, and Larry. Search for what's left. You sit here, and I'll tell you what happened. And they were all very calm and positive, and um, we got the pets out. That lifted my heart because if they can be that way, then I, I should be that way. So all of Miles' movies growing up, the Little League games, first talking, the first walking. They're, 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 they're down in there. A couple days later, there was a sifting party. <laughs> On the road to recovery, there needs to be closure. Surrounded by a support staff of our dearest friends, it's time to sift the day away, hoping to find a ruby in the rubble, a treasure in the trash. They all are treasures because they're, they're from what once was. A needle in the haystack, a diamond in the dust and you thank God that you're alive and, and you go on with your life. And I think you live from here on out without as much clutter. Through it all, Larry was very calm and very understanding. And uh, I think it helped him, obviously, his family, and it helped the community to understand that we're all in this together. It's difficult to believe that was 15 years ago. A lot of us remember it so vividly. Up next, long after those flames were extinguished, Larry went back to the place where his house once stood to bring a beloved family pet home to rest. That emotional story next. Here's a guy on the verge of sitting on the Supreme Court, and he's got this cloud of sexual harassment over his head. Why didn't this come out before? First he said, I did not do it. I am not the ace bandit. He told MG Prez that in an interview, and then a couple of weeks later he said, yes, I am. All this is is a continuation of the same weird weather we've had five years, and if you want to take it as any kind of sign, it may be a sign that we'll have continued drought. News that hits home. News 8. Welcome back. You just saw Larry Himmel report on the loss of his own home in the 2007 wildfires. But things have a way of coming full circle. 
through destruction and despair, there is also hope. Our managing editor, Barbara Richards, explains why this next story has stuck with her through the years. He was in the process of rebuilding, and he went back to his home, which is now a just a dirt lot, for a very sad reason, but the story had humor in it. Uh, it has an uplifting end. He interviews nobody. He's the only person in the piece, but he shares his thoughts and his feelings through it in such a beautiful way that at the end I just said, wow, I loved that. I don't get back to the side of my old house very often. There's really no reason. The house has been demolished. Just a few retaining walls remain. The land's been scraped and left barren, and well, we're still a year or two away from being rebuilt. But last weekend, Joan and Miles and I returned here to bring home a family member, our cat Smitty. For the past 17 years, Smitty's been part of the Himmel household. I can't tell you how many nights I woke up and thought I was having a heart attack, but it was just Smitty lying on my chest, purring away. If you curled up on the couch, he'd curl up on the couch. And even though we were all allergic to him, he brought us more laughs than sneezes. We loved his company, but last weekend we had to put Smitty to sleep. Tough decision, the right thing to do. We laid him to rest outside the remnants of the only home he'd ever known. After we paid our last respects, I looked around and saw a little patch of hope. And then another, and then another. Despite being bulldozed and plowed under, plants were again growing on the hillside. Out of the charred earth, life was returning, and I felt renewed, invigorated. For the first time since the fire, I knew there would truly be better days ahead, and they would happen right here on this spot. It was just a little patch of green, but it symbolized a rebirth, a reminder that home is where the heart is, and home is where Smitty's spirit will live forever. Larry Himmel, News 8. Larry passed away in 2014 and we all miss him so much, but we love keeping his memory alive through our throwback stories. When we come back, an annual radio contest that went off the rails after just two years, we're taking you back to 1998, a notorious summer in Belmont Park history. It looks like they've gotten the upper hand because the wind has died down, but it is not under control yet. The people in Normal Heights have been watching. They see the fire, they remember losing their homes. I guess they're reliving it all over again. Who needs to get these shots? Well, people, um, they say people over 65 and people with chronic illnesses. For some people, the flu can be deadly. Longtime San Diegans will remember this iconic, if not notorious, summer in San Diego history. It was the summer of 1998, and at the time, we owned the local 100.7 FM radio station, and we're hosting the second annual Whirl Till You Hurl contest on the Giant Dipper roller coaster at Belmont Park. 22 riders began, hoping to win $50,000 as the last remaining contestant. But 70 days later, 70 days, the station had to call it off and split the prize between the last five contestants. It was quite the story, and we decided to report live from the roller coaster in the midst of it all. Not an easy feat for a local station in the 1990s. Photojournalist Scott Hall, who has worked here for 38 years, shares how we made it work. Our radio station at the time was doing a promotion back in 1998. And what they came up with was to put a bunch of people on the Mission Beach roller coaster to ride it all day and stay on it all night. You're watching San Diego's number one source for news. Right here, right now, this is News 8 at 5. What we're going to do now is it's never been done here in San Diego. Why not do something really special and go live from the roller coaster? Never been done before, ever. Bruised Becky. Why are they calling you Bruised Becky? Because I have gotten so bruised up on this. I had 23 bruises the last time I counted. 23 bruises. All right, going to our first dip. Let's see if we can hang on. How do you guys do this? I have no idea. Evie, there's got to be a trick to this. Yeah, 
Yeah, loosen up. Some photographers might think, oh, we'll just shoot that from the sidewalk, look up at the roller coaster, make it a thing done. Do you know when and where the turns are coming up? Oh, yeah, I know it all by heart. <laughs> This was a breakthrough in technology. You can't take the big camera that we have, 25 pounds, on board this roller coaster that's just crazy. We had just gotten a camera about this size, about the size of a small flashlight. All right, there's Bruce Becky. She's uh, probably got bruise number 55 now. It was so fun. At one point, you see that I turned the camera right on myself. And there's Scott with the camera. <laughs> and I'm just okay. like all smiles. Ah! We're all staying till the end. We did one more roller coaster run. Ah! I included this one because reporter Amy Nuzo you have got to be kidding me. Really expressed what we were all feeling on that ride. <laughs> People ask me, did you throw up? I am proud to say, no, I did not throw up. Good for you, Scott. You still look the same two decades later. All right, that is just a small peek into the ever-expanding video vault here at KFMB Studios. We have the largest archive of news footage here in San Diego because we've been on the air longer than anyone else as the first television station to hit the airwaves in America's finest city. We hope you can join us for our hour-long throwback special with even more archival footage and some of the most memorable moments in San Diego history, including a notorious tank rampage page that you've probably heard about. You'll have to catch the full hour long show for a look back at that story or you can head online. We have hours of our best and most talked about throwback stories posted there. Head to our social media pages CBS8.com or the CBS8 app. Thank you so much for joining us for this peek into San Diego's past. I'm Marcella Lee. I'll see you next time San Diego.